Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of March. For the new martyrs, we pray that those who risk their lives for the gospel in various parts of the world inflame the church with their courage and missionary enthusiasm. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we spend this time with the Lord, as we begin a new day, let us ask the Lord to give us all the graces that we may require for this day. Today may be a day where we may have to face a lot of challenges. There may be some unfinished work which needs to be completed. And for all this, we need the grace of the Lord. We need strength we need confidence. And therefore, Lord, as we spend this time with you, we ask you to give us the graces that we require. Also give us the patience that we may need, so that whatever task we do today, it may be done according to your will. You always have a plan for us, and everything, whatever happens, is according to your plan. Lord, today help us to realize the plan that you have for us. My dear friends, on many occasions, we forget to thank the Lord for all the things that he does for us. Sometimes it could be because we are caught up with our activities because of our busy schedule. On other occasions, it could be because we do not recognize the Lord working in our lives through these activities. And therefore today, as we begin today's morning prayer, let us begin on this note by asking the Lord, Lord, help us to see your works, to see your hand in the various activities of our lives. And therefore, let us begin by thanking the Lord for all the graces that we have received right from the time of our birth till now and for all the graces that we will continue to receive in the future. Lord, first and foremost, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for all the talents, the abilities that you have given us. And we thank you for molding us, being there with us at every step of the way. Lord, we also pray for all those who have become very much part and parcel of our life. 
We pray for our friends, family members, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. And therefore, Lord, we ask you that bless them at every step of the way. They have guided us. They have made us who we are. It is because of their hard work, their time and dedication that we have become who we are. And therefore, Lord, we ask you to bless all their endeavors and give them the graces that they may require. Lord, we also thank you for all the activities that have gone by, for guiding us, for protecting us. Most importantly, we thank you for the gift of this day, a day that may have its challenges. And therefore, Lord, we ask you to be with us, to guide us and to protect us. Lord, we also ask you that you be with us at every step of the way. Lord, we thank you for giving us the experiences in life. There may have been many experiences which may have been good, which we may want to cherish. But there may also be those experiences which may be very hard. But these experiences have taught us a lot in life. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for these good and not so good experiences. Lord, we thank you for every opportunity that you have given us to make use of our talents, to make use of our gifts, not only for ourselves, but also for the betterment of others. And therefore, Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask that you may be present in whatever we do, in all our endeavors. And my dear friends, let us now close our eyes at this moment. And let us praise the Lord for giving us the gift of another day. He has woken us up this morning. He has given us good health. He has kept us in his love. At every moment, his gaze is upon us. Our Lord never abandons us. He loves us. He is there to guide and protect us. And for all this, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. And my dear friends, let this day be a day of joy and blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we shall reflect on Psalm 61. And as usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm. And then we shall go into the details of the psalm. Now Psalm 61 is a psalm of David expressing his cry for help and his trust in God's refuge and protection. And therefore in a way Psalm 61 can be divided into three main sections. The first section will include a plea for God's attention and assistance. And this we can find in verses 1 to 2. Now, in verses 3 to 4, we will find a declaration of trust in God's shelter and faithfulness. And then finally, in verses 5 to 8, we see that there is a vow to praise God and fulfill vows in the presence of the Lord. And therefore, we see that verse 1 begins, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. And therefore, in this opening verse, we see that David earnestly calls out to God, seeking his attention and imploring him to listen to his cry for help. And now we'll see that this will set the tone for the psalm as a heartfelt plea for God's protection. Now, in verse 2, we see that it begins, From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Here we see that David expresses his desperation and he acknowledges the fact that his overwhelmed heart is something that needs attention. Now, he recognizes 
his needs for God's guidance and therefore he asks to be led to the rock, symbolizing a place of safety and security. And therefore when he considers this whole scenario of the rock, he considers the rock to be a place or a situation that is higher and stronger than his current situation. So therefore the rock becomes a kind of a shelter, a kind of a protection for him. Now in our day to day lives we also will realize that when things do not go according to plan, we also need some kind of refuge, we need something that will be there to give us confidence, to guide us. And similarly here the Lord becomes the rock for David. Now in verses 3 to 4 we see for you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from my enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. And we see that here David reflects on his past experience of finding refuge and protection in God. He therefore describes God as a shelter, a strong tower and the one who provides a safe place under his wings. Now David affirms his commitment to dwell in God's presence forever and to place his trust in his protective care. Now in verses 5 to 6 we see, For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life his years as many generations. And here David expresses his gratitude and his confidence in God's faithfulness. He acknowledges that God has heard his vows and has granted him a share in the heritage of those who fear God's name. Therefore David believes that God will extend his life and bless him with long-lasting kingship. And then finally in verses 7 to 8, He shall abide before God forever, O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praise to your name forever, for I may daily dwell and perform my vows. Here David concludes the psalm with a declaration of his intention to place God continually, to sing praises to God and to fulfill his vows. Here we see that he expresses his desire for God to prepare his journey. Therefore, he expresses his desire to be seen in the mercy of the Lord. And therefore here he emphasizes on the qualities of the Lord that the Lord is merciful, that the Lord is kind. And therefore he calls upon the Lord to be there, to sustain him, to help him in these moments of trials. And therefore, my dear friends, overall we see that Psalm 61 showcases David's heartfelt cry for God's help and his unwavering trust in God's refuge and faithfulness. It highlights a theme of seeking shelter and protection in God, especially during moments of distress. And therefore the psalm encourages a posture of praise and commitment to fulfilling vows in response to God's intervention and steadfast love. And therefore, my dear friends, having reflected on this psalm, let us spend a few moments in silence. Let us allow the psalm to take root in us so that whatever we may have gained, it may be a verse or a thought that touched us, that may have got our attention. Let us remain with that verse, let us remain with that thought. And therefore, allow the Lord to lead you. Let the psalm become part of you. So as you spend a few moments in silence, remain with this thought, remain with this verse. And therefore, let the psalm become part of you, so that together your actions may reveal the love, praise and joy of the Lord.
pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Pray for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.